So a self-reflection exercise you can begin and apply practically immediately to be what is a loving parent and you can actually do that from God's perspective and your perspective and it's an exercise for you to connect to the feelings God has about being a parent and also your own beliefs and expectations and demands and feelings and false definitions of love about being a parent. So what that would involve is doing two columns. One is about how God feels about parenting and how the world or you feel about parenting. So your beliefs and God's feelings. So you can have God's view of the role of a parent and the world's view of the role of a parent. And the world's view includes you. Or you could have God's view, the world's view, your view. And you can put in any statement here. You could have the role of a parent. You could have... You could have a quality, you could have um, definitions of love. Okay, let's put that here. For your self-reflection, you can just put in whatever you, whatever question or query or thought or area that you want to explore. Just insert that and then you can have three columns and one is God's view, the world's view, your view. Now, if you don't have a relationship with God or if you haven't got someone who can actually educate you on what is loving and what is truthful from God's perspective, then you might struggle with God's view. But if you revisit this exercise and as you grow and as you develop and as you reflect more and as you become more open and more sensitized to your own emotions and your feelings and you're more humble to receiving information from God, then you'll be able to add to that list. The beauty of it is it's like a little snapshot. And you can see how open you are to receiving information. Also be aware that you might get information from spirits or from your own self that you want to believe is true. And you might put that in the God column. And while you're working um, to have a relationship with God and to come to understand more truth, just be aware that there's things that you may know for certain and there's things uh, and I'm talking from God's perspective here you may learn things and you'll know for certain that they're truthful from God's perspectives then there's going to be things that you're going to not really have a clue about you're going to be not know at all and then there's going to be things that you're sort of unsure about and that's just to keep that in mind of like, okay, some things I'm going to know. And once you know them and they're in your soul, and if you've received God's love and you've received information on that thing, you will know for certain it is certain. And the truth is the truth. Like God's truth doesn't change. It's absolute. It's, it is truth. So that's something to look at and to remember and know. That's the absolute truth. That's the facts from God's perspective. Then there's going to be a heap of things that you just... Um, that you're unsure about. You might have a feeling about it and you're like, oh yeah, well that kind of feels true, but I'm not certain that it is true yet. And that's just another thing to look at. And then you're going to have things where you just go, I have no idea. And part of humility is being honest about those areas and being honest that, look, I really don't know and I really don't understand. And being honest of like, say, if you do receive truth, oh no, I know that to be true. Um, there's going to be a tendency, if you already think you're right, to think that God is in agreement with you. And that's something that you're going to need to explore and work through and develop and come to see that maybe you're not always right. Um, it's going to take a lot of personal desire to and a lot of truth and being pretty humble to the fact that actually what you think about yourself might not be right if you have a superior attitude. And that maybe what, like you're going to need to be open to the fact that everything that God tells you is going to challenge your entire belief about yourself. And we'll need to develop a, a very strong desire for the truth about yourself and to be truthful with yourself about yourself and also be very, very um, like accept the truth from God because it's only via receiving truth from God really about your condition and about the way you treat others that you're really going to come to see how God feels about you and then come to actually see that the way you interact with the world is wrong. And it is a very big disservice that parents do to children is to teach them that they are superior and that they actually are better than other people. And sadly in families, there's, there's often a feeling that uh, even if the child is treated very badly in the family, that the family is still superior to other families. And the superiority in the world causes a lot of pain and suffering for other people. And it's something that is worth investigating. 
So you can, you know, long to, to God to uh, um, find out about all kinds of qualities from God. So we're talking here about um, equality, you can, which is part of justice. You can long to God and feel about justice. You can long to God and feel about compassion. You can long to God and feel about humility. You can long to God and feel about or anything. If you focus on spiritual qualities, then you'll get a lot of information very quickly. They'll be very helpful to learning more about love. So in our tables here, we have God's view, the world's view, and my view. Be really honest with yourself, you know, how do you feel about it? So what do you feel that the role of the parent is? Maybe you feel that, um, and you don't, you you can start in any of the rows, whichever one, one suits you. So you can have a look at, well, okay, how does the world feel about the role of a parent? Well, in the world, mainly people feel that they own children. So then you can look at how you feel about children and say, yeah, they're my children, like they belong to me. That's, that's you expressing, so you go, yeah, okay, I'm in agreement. I, I feel that, that as a parent, I own children. And then you can feel about God's view. How does God feel about that? No, God does not believe that parents own children. In fact, God feels completely opposite. God feels that we are all God's children. And also God feels that it is wrong. Actually, it's very morally wrong that we believe that we own children. And there's a lot more to that. God feels that we are all that we're all unique souls and individuals and have a unique expression and that we're not owned, that we're actually free beings and free individuals. God has very strong feelings about what it, what it means to be a parent. So you can see, you can just make a list of different things and you may not get much in your first list. It might be a lot, how I mentioned, that there's a lot of things that you don't know and you might feel really clueless about. And that's how it is at the beginning. It's like getting an education in anything. When you begin and you have no idea about the topic, there's going to be a lot of areas that you really do not understand, you've never heard about, you haven't even considered, and you don't even know that they're possibilities. And that's the beauty of God's way is that you learn so much. And the most rapid way to do that is to receive God's feelings on a matter because that gives you so much information. So go well with your self-reflection. You can put into practice anything that I have discussed in this presentation and you can self-reflect on that in regards to your own personal situation and your own personal experience right now. Another self-reflection exercise is how do I feel about being a parent? How do I feel about children? How do I feel about God? How do I feel about being a child of God? What kind of parent do I believe God is? What are my beliefs? What are my demands and expectations? All of these are things that you can personally reflect upon in your family dynamic right now, and they are worth looking at. Um, remember in a previous presentation, I have said, take the biggest issue that you have and work on that one. And this is another opportunity to do that in regards to, well, what are your beliefs around parenting? Because as soon as your beliefs change, and that is an emotional process to change beliefs, and once the, your heart has changed and your beliefs have changed, then you will automatically take different actions. So change your beliefs, then you're going to ch and become more in harmony with God's truth. There's going to be a positive result and you can actually become a more loving person quite rapidly by doing so. Like I said, you can make a moral choice no matter what your, condi your soul condition is right now and you can stick by that. A personal example of that is that I chose to deal with demands in our family. It was one of the first things that I dealt with. And I said, okay, I'm not going to meet demands. This was quite hard for me because I was meeting a lot of demands. And so for the first few days, what I found is that I was meeting all kinds of demands and I get to the end of the day. And sometimes I didn't even realize that I'd done that. It took um, my ex um, husband pointing those out to me or friends of mine pointing them out to me because there were certain things that I was so automatically doing that I didn't even notice. So the external feedback was very helpful. Some of them though I did recognize and I recognized them and I knew that I was doing them to get something back. In the sense I was getting an addiction met by meeting the demand. It made me feel useful, it made me feel important, it made me feel like I was needed. There were lots of different things that I felt so they're just, just mentioning a couple of those. And though, and so what I did is I stopped meeting that demand and the ones that I could see and recognize and I just chose the biggest ones. And in our family, they were big, like they were, the demands were loud, they were 
um, in your face, you couldn't really miss them. So that was helpful because sometimes the demands can also be projected at people, meaning that the feeling goes out, but people don't say anything. But what I also became sensitive to was when I was responding or I felt guilty and then I would take an action. And so that was a process of sensitizing to my own emotions. And this is an experiment you can trial right now in your family. Choose the biggest thing that's happening and do the opposite. So if you're always sacrificing yourself, don't sacrifice yourself anymore. Just stop and feel and see what happens. If you're the one who always is making dinner and everyone expects that, don't make the dinner anymore. See what happens, see how you feel, see the response, feel your feelings, work through them. You can take any issue in the family and you can work through it and you can make changes. If both parents are listening to this, it's a, it's a, you know, sit down and make a plan. Like you can help each other to see where there's certain issues in your life and where there's problems. And if you have honest, truthful, open conversations with each other, remembering not to blame your partner, you can work on these things together. And we'll discuss that in the next presentation.